Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel Irfan CFPS. In today's session, we are going to unveil the secrets of fire pump performance curves according to NFPA 20 guidelines. By analyzing these curves, we can select the appropriate fire pump that will provide the necessary flow rate and head for a specific application. See, before we are going to select a fire pump, you need to understand the fire pump performance curves. You can see on your screen the pump characteristic curves extracted from NFPA 20. So let us try to understand this performance curve. There are certain points you need to remember, such as these performance curves are the graphical representation of a fire pump's performance characteristics. It shows the relationship between the pump's flow rate and the total dynamic head developed by the pump. This curve is determined through rigorous testing following the guidelines set by NFPA 20. A fire pump's performance curve consists of multiple points that plot the flow rate and total dynamic head at various operating conditions. By analyzing these performance curves, engineers and technicians can determine the most suitable fire pump for a specific application. Apart from this, there are two most important points which are stated in NFPA 20. You need to make sure you are able to remember these two particular points since these are the deciding factors to select a fire pump. So the first most important point is that the fire pumps shall furnish not less than 150% of rated capacity at not less than 65% of total rated head. And second point is the shutoff head shall not exceed 140% of rated head for any type of pump. I will explain you this one by just considering one small fire pump. One second. Here we have 1000 GPM fire pump at 100 PSI. This is the rated capacity and 100 PSI is the total rated head. Now this pump shall produce 150% of the rated capacity at or at least 65% of total rated head. So in our case when we have 1000 GPM at 100 PSI then 150% of 1000 will be 1500 GPM at the rate we need to get at least 65% of this 100 PSI. So it will be about 65 PSI. So this is the first criteria we need to satisfy to comply NFPA 20 requirement. And the second criteria is the shutoff head. If you see shutoff head shall be or shutoff head shall not be more than 140% of the rated head for any type of pump. So we have our total rated as, as 100 PSI. So our shutoff head shall be less than 100 into 140 percent this will be around 140 psi this might vary uh, based on the pump manufacturer curve however the pump shall not produce the shutoff head more than 140 percent at zero flow condition so here you can see in this figure they have shown on x-axis percent of rated capacity which means flow 0 GPM, 50 GPM for example you consider, this actually they have mentioned as percentage but however you can think like 0 GPM, 50 GPM, 100 GPM, 150, 200 GPM, if you multiply this it will be 0 GPM, 500 GPM, 100 GPM, I mean 1000 GPM, 1500 GPM, 2000 GPM and so on. On Y axis they mentioned the PSI, percent of rated head. So here based on our two points they have shown the curve here, here you have 100% of the total flow, for example I will take the laser mark, yeah, here you can see the 100% of the rated capacity. For example, we have 1000 as per our consideration, 1000 GPM and it is providing 100% of the total head which is 100 PSI. So this will be the point. And second thing is this pump shall produce 150% of the rated capacity. So when you come to here, 150% of this one is, you can find here, this is the point. 150% will be 1500 GPM. So here and here on left hand side on Y axis, you can see 65% of the total rated head. And the shutoff pressure at zero flow condition shall not exceed 140 percent. So this is shown in this particular graph. In next slide we are going to actually select the fire pump based on the available conditions or based on the system demand requirements. See this is the most important slide to be discussed in order to select the proper fire pump. So you need to watch the full video from here. So you have an example shown on your screen. We have the wet pipe sprinkler system installed in this particular project and the system demand based on the hydraulic calculation is 1025 GPM at 70 PSI. So based on these data, we need to select the fire pump. We have two options here, fire pump A and fire pump B. Fire pump A capacity is 1000 GPM at 80 PSI 
and fire pump peak capacity is 750 gpm at 90 psi so we need to draw the performance curve then only we will be able to select the correct fire pump so we will consider the first option right now in this particular slide and draw the performance graph so on x axis as i told you before we will put the flow in gpm and on y axis we will put the pressure in psi so just give me half a minute so that i will put all the details here you have the flow on x axis in gpm and pressure in psi on y axis so just we will put 0 gpm here here for example we will put as 200 gpm 400 600 800 1000 gpm 1200 gpm 1400 gpm 1600 and 1800 gpm on y axis we can mention like uh, here 10 psi 20 30 40 50 psi 60 psi 70 psi 80 psi 90 psi 100 psi and here 110 psi so if you see this particular uh, graph this is not the actual graph shown in nfpa 20 however i am considering this particular graph so that you will be able to understand easily and the concept is exactly the same as mentioned in nfpa 20 so now we'll just try to take one more color and draw the uh, you know performance curve here we are going to select the fire pump a first of all so the capacity is 1000 gpm at 80 psi we have 1000 gpm here and 80 psi is somewhere here you can see you need to just put some cross mark on this particular interconnection point so you have the fire pump uh, what we call uh, you know capacity we have shown in this graph and then we need to put at zero flow the shutoff head will be 92 psi so here on y axis if you look at on y axis so at 92 psi we need to mark so just i am trying to mark for example if uh, it is here somewhere so 92 psi we are marking the shutoff head and at overload means for 1000 gpm the overload capacity will be 1500 gpm as discussed in earlier slide so at 1500 gpm here we need to uh, you know show the interconnection point at 52 psi so somewhere if you see this graph yeah so i will just try to mark that point as well so here we have uh, the 52 and uh, it will be 50 to okay see just we need to draw these three points you can see on the screen i'm just trying to join these points and i'm just drawing the dotted lines at this particular or on this particular graph so 1000 gpm at 80 psi and here we have 1500 gpm at 52 psi so apart from this we also consider the shutoff head so the shutoff head will be 92 psi as per the question option a so on y axis at zero flow we consider the 92 psi now we need to check our requirement so here we have the system demand as 1025 at 70 psi so just we'll try to locate this point on the graph so just a minute so now just we need to you know take the system demand and you know mark on the performance curve so if you see 1025 gpm will be somewhere here you can see on your screen somewhere here and 70 psi is here so just i will mark this particular point in our drawing so we we can draw the you know intersection point we can mark the intersection point so 1025 gpm here we have and it will go till the uh, you know 70 psi so it will be somewhere here so this is the most important and critical point you need to note so this here we have 70 psi and 1025 gpm we have so this particular demand system demand is inside this performance curve so this pump is acceptable and we can consider this particular fire pump in our project however we have fire pump b as well i hope you understand the concept so this you can take it as case study and let me know whether this fire pump can also be selected in our project or not so in next class we are going to select the fire pump considering another scenario based on the fire pump performance curves i hope you understand today's concept if you have any queries or comments you can just comment in the comment section and if you like my video please subscribe to my channel and share with others so that they can also benefit from my video series thank you once again bye